Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Burk. Uh, it's a beautiful morning in Studio City. Um, it's a tad early for me, but I'm getting excited and a little bit of coffee will help uh, wake up for this interview with Lindsay does voiceovers and a bunch of other things. She also belongs to an advanced improv group. group. So that's pretty killer. Um, so I'm excited to interview her. I've met her in acting class, actually. Fun fact, I was 13. She was a little bit older. I was put into the teenage group when I was t not a teenager, and sh she was a teenager. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Um, so it's like a 20 second thing. You have to answer like five questions. Okay. Uh, like as fast as I can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So because it's 20 seconds. Okay. Well, last time the person failed. So. Oh no. Yeah. I don't want to be a failure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Favorite movie? Uh, The Shining. Favorite television show? Um, Black Mirror. <laughs> Favorite book? The Shining. <laughs> Favorite song? Um, I want to hold your hand by the Beatles. <laughs> Favorite color? Pink. Favorite place in LA? Santa Monica. Whoa, 20 seconds in 92, whatever. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, do, I mean, I felt like I was more so just saying the first thing that came to mind yeah. for some of those than actually answering my favorite. Yeah. But, um, but some of them were actually my favorites. Okay, that's good. That's mm -hmm. honest. Yeah, I, I like honesty. How did you get into acting? Um, well, you were kind of there for it. I start. I just started, like, kids' acting classes. I was pretty shy. Um, and, and it just, like, brought me out of my shell so quickly that I was like, this is a really just amazing way for me to actually express myself. And I just felt, like, very akin to it and very, um, very passionate about it from the start. Uh, so after taking a few just like commercially kids style, like very Disney Channel-esque kind of acting classes, I then uh, went into a four-year conservatory style program um, where they were very, you know, originally I was just kind of thinking, oh, it's a drama program, I'll learn to act. I wasn't really taking it as seriously, even though I knew that's what I wanted to do, but then I... Um, they were very serious about it. They took themselves very seriously. And so it just kind of became like, oh, no, I am really serious about this. And, like, I really want this. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I did it for all of high school extensively, studied theater, because that's how you study acting. It's hard to kind of, like, learn to act with film and television type mm -hmm. stuff. And then, but I knew I wanted to be a film and TV actor, so then I went to college for four years because I figured I, I would like the college experience. I would like a bachelor's degree. Um, and as soon as I graduated college, uh, I just jumped right into it, you know, just started auditioning right away. Did you like the college experience? I loved it, yeah. It was exactly what I wanted. I went to USC, fight on. Um, <laughs> And I just, yeah, I mean, I knew my high school experience was very artsy and very different and very small. We went to the same school, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. I think I could have really uh, done not so well at, like, a traditional high school. Yeah. But, um, but I did kind of always look forward to a traditional campus college university atmosphere with big dorm rooms and lots and lots of students and like a beautiful campus and a football field so um, I really wanted your like stereotypical college experience and and I got it it was really I mean it was super fun USC is a great school for the entertainment industry I studied mm -hmm. all the things that I wanted to study I went abroad for a semester so um yeah, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I would like to go back. I wish, you know, I, I would really enjoy doing that, but I'm already so in debt. <laughs> I really can't yeah. afford to, like, go back to school right now. Where did you study abroad? I studied abroad in London um, for four months, and I traveled around while I was there. Oh, nice. 
Yes. I'm yeah. going there this summer for 10 days. Are you? Uh, for class. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. jealous. Gonna, you're going to like it. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I've been there before, but um, when I was 12 and not really enjoying it as much as right. I yeah. Did. Yeah, today. Yeah, I had been to London before I went abroad there, and I didn't love it the first time I went, but, but uh, when I went there more as an adult, Mm-hmm. It was just, I mean, it was incredible. I loved it so much. I've never loved a place more than I love LA. And I think yeah. I think I did. Like, I would have liked yeah. to, to stay there. But it was so expensive. It's the most expensive city, I think. I mean, other than maybe, um, like, Dubai or something. Um, or whatever city. It's, like, one of the most expensive cities really? in the world. Really? I do know that. It's, yeah, it's way more expensive than LA, for sure. You, you it's it, On the one hand, it's nice because it really puts in perspective like, how much better it is to live in L.A. You're here, yeah. like, wine, you know, like, oh, everything's so expensive here. But then if you go to London, you're like, oh, my God, I would give anything just to have L.A. prices back. I guess I never really thought of that when I was 12. Yeah, it wouldn't, have, it yeah. wouldn't have affected you. Um, you'll be aware of it now. I think it's a little bit better now than it was when I was there because I was there just after the London Olympics and um, right in the middle of all the economic stuff so like the pound to dollar was just absurd to begin with and then all their prices were hugely inflated because they had just had the Olympics so for sure it wasn't really a good time to be there financially but I still I really enjoyed it and I think you will too cool yeah I'm excited uh back to acting back to acting so (laughs) tangent it's okay (laughs) I did I started it um did your family support you when you told them that you wanted this as a career Yeah, my family's always been really supportive. Um, They didn't, you know, originally it was just like, oh, well, Lindsay found something that she loves, right? So so they were supportive just in me kind of pursuing it as a kid. Um, I was very immediately like, I need an agent. I'm going to be a child actor. And... (laughs) They weren't too keen on that. They didn't, you know, every other day I was like, get me an agent. And they were like, no, you know, so they just like didn't, they just, they kind of didn't support me in that way because, but, but in a lot of ways, I think they were trying to protect me. Um, and I appreciate that. I don't think they wanted me to be, you know, falling into this trap that a lot of child actors do where you just jump right into it without actually training or having mm-hmm. like a real sense of hard work before you even do it. And it is much easier, I think, for, for children to just like book roles right away and suddenly think they're, you know, like a celebrity, which um, they can. They can re- reach stardom very quickly these days. Um, and there is no hard work that goes into it and no training and no uh, blood, sweat, and tears yeah. And I really ended up like pouring my blood, sweat, and tears into this, and, and really, and really tr- training for a long time before I actually even decided to pursue it. Yeah. Um, so they were supportive. Uh, they initially, as a kid, were like, you know, you're going to go to school, and the yeah. school says you can't work as an actor while you're in this program. So we're going to listen to that, and you know, eventually, then then you can try it. Um, and they also. You know, as much as they supported me wanting to do it, they also were very, you know, from the start, everybody's so skeptical of people who want to be an actor. So they were very much like, "You well, you need to have a backup plan. You've got to go to college and have a backup sure. plan. Like, yeah. what's your backup plan? Do you want to be a marine biologist? Like, it was like they, they had all these, like, ideas of, like, other things that I could study while I was at school. Um, and I did, in some sense, initially go to college for the backup plan, but once I got there, I was like, you know what? No, I'm I'm serious about acting. I don't have if I have a backup plan, that's what's gonna end up happening. So um, I got a degree in communication and studied a lot of film and theater classes while I was there. So you know, theoretically, if down the line I did decide that I didn't want to act anymore, I do have the degree. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the only they were very supportive, but they were a little pushy about me like having a potential fallback plan. Which I was always kind of like, no, there's no, there is no fallback. But, uh, yeah. but I, yeah, they were never, they didn't oppose me going to theater school or anything. They were always, you know, on board with it. They definitely were like, uh, you have to be able to really take rejection, Lindsay. Can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> so for a while, they were trying to prepare me for the worst. That's good. But um, yeah, but they supported it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I mean, and I'm very fortunate. I know I knew a lot of people in college who 
I met at USC who were in the theater program who had just, like, their relationship with their parents had just been destroyed, like, right as they left for college really? because their because parents, of yeah, this. because their parents, like, didn't support them, you know, going to theater school and, and yeah. pursuing that. I've yeah. heard that happen. Yeah. Too. It sucks. Yeah. Um, so improv, when did you know that you had this love for improv and not just acting? I really, the improv love happened even before I got serious about acting because I was taking those kids classes, Mm -hmm. which are very improv based. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, you were that, you know, my, like my best friend Sydney and I used to just like love doing improv. We didn't want to do anything else. Um, it was just a way, the improv itself I think was initially the thing that got me out of my shell because it just sort of forces you to be silly and and be ridiculous and just say and do the first thing that comes to mind without thinking. I had that same experience. Yeah, it like kind of really gets you out of your own head. So that's the thing that I loved about improv initially. And I love comedy. I'm very much the type of person that sees the world from a humorous and often ironic perspective. So the aspect of comedy there was uh, one of the things I loved about it. And then, you know, then I started studying acting and got really serious about it and then went off to college. And so I hadn't really been doing improv for a while. And I graduated and started taking improv classes again just around L.A. Um, And I joined, like, an advanced troupe pretty quickly. So it was like, you know, the improv... Some it, you get rusty, you really do. I hadn't been doing it for a while, and I was very much like back in my own head and, yeah. and not really able to like say or do the first thing that came to mind. So it got me back in the groove of that, and I rediscovered my love for it and joined this team. And so now we perform every Friday night. Nice, yeah. That was um, so. Tell me a little more about that group. So it's called. We call ourselves the Stranger Than Fiction Show. I was not there for the for the creation of that name. They've actually the troupe has been around for like 10 years almost, maybe more. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm the baby. I just joined with them for like two and a half years now. And um, and they've been through like many, like a few of them are staple cast members that have been there for a long time, but they've mm-hmm. been through others that have come and gone. Um, so it's the Stranger Than Fiction show. It's at LA Connection Comedy Theater, uh, which is in Burbank, every Friday night at 9 p.m. And... Um, everybody's just, everybody on the team has a really sort of unique style of humor about them. It's really interesting how different we all are, but, um, but we really like vibe well together. There's a lot of improv teams that I think, um, don't know how to work together. And the problem with improv is that it's really hit or miss. You know, if you're not working well with your team, it can just, yeah. just like plummet I to the earth yeah. so quickly, and some <laughs> people hate going to improv shows because they're like, oh, "It's not funny. It's so uncomfortable." Um, but when you really enjoy the people you're working with and you're just having a good time on stage, it really makes for some good improv. And so we have that. Um, you have that chemistry. We have that chemistry, and, and so we do have that advantage as a group. What do you see yourself doing in the future. I see myself. Um, acting in films that I have also been involved in writing and potentially directing and maybe producing. So I would like to kind of be a, a very well-rounded uh, maker of movies. Yeah. Um, I would like to, you know, direct films that I'm not in and write films that I'm not in, but I think um, I always, you know, I already write for myself a lot of the time. My skits are very much based on my own experiences and the characters are very much extensions of me. So I think um, in the future I'd really like to be writing and, and making um, my own films. So hopefully like have a production company. Nice. Yeah, that's the ultimate goal. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for taking the time to... Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. It's been a while. Um, yeah. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.